Yes, we should ban TikTok. And if you don't think so, let me try to convince you. Welcome to China Insider, I'm David Zhang. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel today and like this video, and also comment below what your thoughts are on TikTok. This is the CEO of TikTok, Shou Zichu, testifying to Congress on the app's algorithm, access to American data by the Chinese government, and influencing use. For an app that denies ties to the Chinese Communist Party and denies the ability for the CCP to access TikTok data, CEO Chu refused to acknowledge the Uyghur genocide in Xinjiang, just as the Communist government denies any persecution in China. Here is him dodging three questions in a row. Mr. Chu, do you agree that the Chinese government has persecuted the Uyghur population? Congresswoman, you, if you use our app and you open it, you will find our users who that's give not, all sorts of content. That's not my question. My question is, do you agree that the Chinese government has persecuted the Uyghur population? Well, it's deeply concerning to hear about all accounts of human rights abuse. My role here is to explain what our platform does evasive. on this. It's a pretty easy question. Do you agree that the Chinese government has persecuted the Uyghur population? Congresswoman, I'm here to describe TikTok and what we do as a platform. And as All a right. platform, we allow our users to freely express All their right. views on this issue Earlier and any today, other issue that matters. Republican Congressman Gary Palmer pressed Chu on the app's alleged censorship of posts about the internment of Uyghur Muslims in China. TikTok executive Michael Beckerman refused to acknowledge the genocide on CNN and, of course, the concentration camps of Muslims in a December appearance. Sure, you could say that they have not personally been to Xinjiang and saw firsthand what happened to the Uyghurs, but why not just answer the question without dodging it? Who are Chu and Beckerman scared of offending? Certainly not the American public. Could it be the Chinese overlord their company is serving? Does TikTok have access to American data in China? According to BuzzFeed's report, according to leaked audio from about 80 internal TikTok meetings, US users' data have been repeatedly accessed from China. Now, yesterday, TikTok CEO Shou Zichu told US lawmakers that China-based employees at its parent company ByteDance may still have access to some US data from the app, even after a risk mitigation plan called Project Texas is complete. Which means no matter what, as long as China has control over the app, somehow TikTok can still access American data. Who is Chu Zhou? Well, Chu is a Singaporean national. He holds an MBA from Harvard University. Chu worked at Goldman Sachs, and then he jumped to DSD Capital in 2010, which is owned by Russian billionaire Yuri Milner. In the five years at DST, Chu has helped invest in many of China's big tech startups. And Chu then went on to become the CFO of Xiaomi, which is a Chinese mobile phone maker. In 2021, he joined ByteDance and became first the CFO, chief financial officer. Now he is the CEO of TikTok. What exactly is Chu defending? In the more than five hour hearing, Chu defended the app's data access, saying that the app does not spy on Americans. Has ByteDance spied on American citizens? I don't think that spying is the right way to describe it. So saying spying is not the right word, then what is? Well, in December, TikTok admitted that ByteDance employees used the app to track the location of journalists reporting critically on the company through their IP addresses. Four ByteDance employees, both US and China based, were fired for accessing the data in an apparent effort to identify sources leaking internal company information to reporters. And the FBI and the Department of Justice are investigating the events. So I'm not so sure if Mr. Chu is caught up on that aspect. Now, of course, Chu is defending a lie. Yesterday in the hearing, under questioning from Chairwoman Kathy McNorris Rogers, Chu wouldn't say with 100% certainty that TikTok could resist orders from the CCP to boost pro Beijing content during an invasion of Taiwan. He only offered vague platitudes about keeping the platform free from foreign manipulation.
He said that his attorneys at TikTok helped to prepare him for this hearing, but he deflected questions about whether individuals at ByteDance assisted. And whether employees in China continue to have access to data of U.S. users, according to him, is, quote, a complex topic. It's no secret that TikTok has been engaging at the behest of the CCP to actively influence American society. And it's all because of its algorithm. At the center of the hearing and the storm around banning TikTok is how the app's algorithm works. The truth is no one knows how it works, but everybody knows that it's influencing Americans. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube have algorithms that are at least somewhat clear. It generally is to be that the more you post, the more you engage, well, the more chance of you getting noticed and the chance of you going viral is higher. On TikTok, however, that isn't really the case. No one knows how to go viral on TikTok. It just happens. One of your videos simply could get millions of views at times suddenly, and of course, this is great for content creators, but it is really bad for audiences. Content get reached to a wider user base, some 150 million users in the US alone, that then gets distributed to other platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and so on. However, as a user of the app, the content push isn't actually such a mystery. Of course, we can't deny that TikTok's ability or its user base to project is a much younger based audience, likely underage, and are fans of this type of dancing and music and even co comedic short videos. But that's precisely the scary part too. According to a study done by the Wall Street Journal last year, the journal made a bunch of bot accounts that listed their ages as 13 to 15. They found that by letting accounts browse TikTok, some of the accounts ended up going down rabbit holes involving sexual content and drug use. How did this happen? Well, TikTok calculates a user's interest by how much time they spend watching a short video. And by stopping on videos randomly, say a video about drugs, TikTok will think that the user is into this type of content and in turn will begin to recommend similar content to that user. Now, who, by the way, as we just mentioned, is marked as 13 to 15 year olds. Now, let's extrapolate this into a broader picture. We often view content online as if we are the ones who choose what to watch. But with the introduction of algorithms, that's no longer really the case. We're actually being controlled and told to watch what we think is what we like, when in fact, we're actually already following the algorithm's control. It is pushing content to us. Over time, users on TikTok and other apps will be fine-tuned to accept media messaging, and that's where the digital OPM aspect of TikTok comes in. We always hear that one person say, well, I don't care that my data is being used by China, I'm just a regular person, what can they actually do with my data? or I'm not doing anything illegal and I don't have anything to worry about my data being stolen. Well, the truth is far from it. TikTok's dangers are twofold. Data gathering is one, but the second one is reversed ideological transfer. They know 100% about you, more than you know about yourself, and they actually know who your family members are, who were your most recent contacts, your online habits, and the websites you've vis visited. Also things like what apps have you uh, been using on your phone? What's your banking information, your telephone information, your calendar, your email information? If you won't let these things be told to a stranger on the street, why are you letting people in China have them? Now, of course, it doesn't just stop here. TikTok gathers data about you so that they can better transfer their ideology back to you. Digital opium. It's a way to fuel your mental satisfaction and use data to control you. The key is for fun. TikTok is branded as a youthful and fun and engaging focused software that uh, every child should have, and it's very popular among young adults as well. Now, it's this very popular thing. Oh, you're not on TikTok? Well, how can you be cool if you're not on TikTok? How can you know the world if you're not on TikTok? How are you not learning from TikTok? To a kid, it's very easy to get to the app. To a young adult, it probably is also very popular. Yet, according to CEO Chu, he doesn't even let his own kids who are 13 year olds use it. Why? According to him, it is because where they live in Singapore, there's no laws governing kids under 13 for restrictions on the type of content that they can see. In the US, there are laws dictating this.
But we just covered that actually kids around 13 year olds in the US, even though there are restrictions on uh, the type of content, according to the Wall Street Journal they found, can still be exposed to sexually explicit videos or drug use videos, among other negative content. Now, if you're just an adult, you might not be involved in some extraordinary online activity, or you might think that you have nothing to offer in terms of your data, but the value, the value of your data to China, building a massive database of every individual using the app, now that's significant for them. There are 150, active million, uh, 150 million active users on TikTok just in the United States alone. So worldwide, that quantity of data is very significant. I was watching a movie recently on Netflix called Luther, The Fallen Sun. Now, of course, Luther is a British psychological crime thriller TV show, but the movie spinoff uh, of the story is that the villain was using or he hacked into people's online footprints. He hacked them and he found out about the secrets that they were engaging online. And he actually blackmailed them to commit crimes to avoid getting the secrets leaked out to their family members and friends. Could the CCP do the same thing? Well, for example, they could be selling the data to a, on the black market and selling it to some criminal syndicate organizations. Uh, if they find a government employee who uses TikTok that has secrets that matter to them, could they very well threaten them with their online identity? Of course, your data is very important. It is actually your entire life. And now, as technology grows, your online footprint and your online identity matters much more, sometimes even in real, than in real life. And if an enemy entity like the Chinese Communist Party holds on to it, they're actually able to weaponize it against you and your family. TikTok repeatedly emphasized that they're not really tied to the Chinese Communist Party. Sure, they tried hard to distance themselves from the government. China also refuses to say that they have control over people's data. In 2017, China passed its cybersecurity law. And then in 2021, two new Chinese laws dealing with data security and privacy came into force. Uh, and they likely have more impact on many of the companies operating in China or uh, any operation that actually touches China. These two laws combined with the 2017 law, as well as some things to do with personal information protection, national security law, national intelligence law, dealing with localization, data export, data security protection, all of these things, they outline one simple deduction. China has control over the data that they can access. So to say that a company, when asked by the Chinese Communist Party to give up their data, for them to say no, it's impossible if they want to survive in China. Of course, these are all dealing with the control of the data, data itself by the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, there are other facts that do tell a different story than what the CCP is saying. Listen to what CEO Chu says here. We, we rely on global interoperability and we have employees in China. So yes, the Chinese engineers do have access to global data. They have access to global data. Uh, we have heard. Not concern. storage. No, storage has always been in Virginia and Singapore. The, the physical service. You have no access to storage, to American data today. That's not what I said. I said. So you do have access to American data and you have storage of American data. The, American data has always been stored in Virginia and Singapore in the past. And access of this is on an as required basis as by our required engineers globally, who? by engineers for business purposes. By engineers, this is a private company. By dance? By dance. Uh, the Communist uh, Party? No, no. Why? Uh, How can you say that? This is a, if this they is have a access. private business. This is a private business. So is TikTok a private company? Well, Chinese Commerce Ministry spokeswoman, oddly enough, has voiced her opposition to the sale of TikTok. Now, if you have nothing to do with this company, allegedly it's a company, it's a private company, why do you care what TikTok does in America? I thought they were private. Here's what she said in full again, quote, if the news is true, China will firmly oppose it. The sale or divestiture of TikTok involves the export of technology. It must follow administrative licensing procedures in accordance with Chinese laws and regulations. The Chinese government will make a decision in accordance with the law. So the Chinese government, is it the technology belonging to the Chinese government or is the company belonging to the Chinese government that they are so interested in what's going on? Now, TikTok may not tell us what the real ties between ByteDance, the parent company, and the Chinese Communist Party are, but we can for sure conclude that the CCP has final says in the decision makings at ByteDance. Here's one example. 
So according to ByteDance employees, uh, they're pretty loyal to the CCP, it seems here. They're holding a party flag. They're required to study Xi's thoughts and communist teachings as a part of being a CCP member. In fact, the chief editor of TikTok parent company, ByteDance, is also its communist party boss in the company. Zhang Fu Ping is also its communist party secretary. His guidance is clear, quote, transmit the correct political direction, public opinion guidance, and value orientation into every business and product line. I wonder what that means. Of course, China also controls every company through something called golden shares. They basically buy up just 1% of the share in that company. But because of the political power and the control, the CCP, that 1% share is actually more powerful than all the 99% other shareholders would have in their shares. And founders of TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, one of them is Zhang Yiming, he's a political representative for the CCP, at least in the most recent gathering, and this was in March. He's a billionaire that also founded many tech companies in China or have invested in them. In Zhang Yiming stepped down as CEO in 2021, and another co-founder, Liang Rubo, assumed the role shortly before that, uh, which was when Chu came in. Uh, that same year, Chu Shouzi, like I mentioned earlier, joined the company as its chief financial officer. Now, why does all this matter? Well, because during that same time frame in 2021, the CCP, of course, through a proxy purchase, uh, obtained that golden share in ByteDance's Chinese unit, which was then called Beijing ByteDance Technology. And Forbes reported that 300 current employees at TikTok and its parent company ByteDance had previously worked for Chinese state media publications, according to public employee LinkedIn profiles. Oh, so in other words, content moderation and likely content policy of TikTok are strictly controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. By the time CEO Xu Chu went to go testify in front of Congress, which was yesterday, the company could not actually justify itself as a private company anymore. So what exactly is the point of all this? Well, TikTok is the tip of the iceberg for what the CCP wants to do. They're waging unrestricted warfare, and TikTok has been the most successful attack. On Thursday, the same day the TikTok hearing was happening, another hearing was taking place. Members of the US government agency tasked with advising on policy toward China testified that a comprehensive worldwide campaign of influence and interference by the CCP has taken place. The US-China Economic and Security Review Commission's testimony suggests that China has dramatically expanded its efforts to shape the attitudes and actions of people outside its borders in ways that advance the CCP's objectives and agenda. And these include influencing people's perception of China, influencing their elections, targeting young people, changing the driving ideological and belief systems in the country. The goal is to strangle us with our own system of freedom. And the opponents of banning TikToks always say that, well, it is just against the freedom of speech to ban the app. Well, I say based on reciprocity, the fact that China doesn't allow US apps like Facebook, YouTube, or Google to exist freely in China, why should a Chinese government controlled app like TikTok be allowed to thrive here? When the US ambassador to China's social media account is restricted on Chinese social media and sometimes censored, why should freedom of speech only apply one way? At the most, we're simply matching the stance of the CCP on social media. Now, going back to TikTok, the Chinese version of the app, which is called Douyin, only allows 40 minutes of views for kids, and they have heavily moderated content for them. Uh, here, the TikTok version, uh, the content is dedicated to keeping kids addicted. Isn't that a clear agenda for the young kids? And to keep them addicted to the screen, to not focus on studying, to not focus on other aspects of life, to just simply be addicted. China's unrestricted warfare is very scary. By infiltrating and co-opting the opposition, it was instrumental in the Communist Party's rise in China following the Civil War with the KMT, which is also known as the Chinese National Party. Uh, initially, the KMT was far more powerful than the Communist Party, but the Communists prevailed by infiltrating KMT troops, turning many generals into CCP sympathizers or planting communist spies as their secretaries. So to topple one society from the inside, the CCP wants to cripple us, and they want us to feel like we have nothing, we have, we have no power against it. So I think banning TikTok is the way forward. Thank you so much for watching today's China Insider. I'm David Zhang. Before we go, make sure to subscribe to our channel and comment below what you think about the video today. Also, like this video, it'll help us grow. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.